Yes, sir. Pleasure to meet you. <laughs> I don't want to tip you over. <laughs> ah, good to meet you finally. You can. Andrew. Andrew. Yep. <laughs> Looks good. Yeah. I haven't gotten used to them yet. I'm orange. Yeah. I think we wish we had a hundred more. Yeah. You know? It, one's not enough. We have to keep going. <laughs> How are they working though? Are they much better? When I came to visit my mom in the village, I left the stick behind and went out into the field, to the hill. I would walk and fall down and get up, without a stick, without anything. I went there, and when it was getting dark, so that no one could see it and run to help me. This is how I learned to walk. I've been wearing them for like 40 minutes now, so I really don't trust them yet. The movements are different, like in all the other artificial limbs. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he, can, he can do some really effective training. We can teach him some, yeah. some hills and stairs. It's a rather bit unclear for me, as if going yep. down the hill. Yep, downhill. That's the hard it's, part. <laughs> it's, it's, it's very, very hard because they're not yours. It's, it's a machine and you have to trust that it'll be there. And, and it's, that's a very hard thing to develop. Well, yes, this is a bit of an issue. Okay. <laughs> once, once you learn to trust them, it's much easier. Time, time, uh, have, they, have they been showing you a lot of, uh, lot of training videos and stuff for the guys who are good at downhill? It will straighten out after a while. Okay. Well, we'll fix that. Yeah. <laughs> I just use them to get in and out of the car. I am not sure. I got used already. I just sit down easily. Oh, by the way, I might also take up Taekwondo. I thought for sure when I see you, I had like something more significant to say, but I'm just very, very excited. It, it, it's, it's gratifying. I also feel pleased. Words are something that you cannot think up or write down. Well, what you feel is exactly as it is. <laughs> That's true. and epochs and the 70 year anniversary of the victory over fascism. This movie is part of the international project. A group of like-minded people from Russia and the United States landed in Afghanistan to choose a site for a movie about the beginning of the Soviet war in Afghanistan, Tajbeg Palace. The storm of Afghan President Amin's palace heralded the beginning of a war which dramatically changed the world's history and people's lives. The walls, badly damaged with shrapnel, keep the record of the fierce battle when the palace was stormed. Those who survived in this pit of hell will always remember the days when they were teetering between life and death. This trip was when the idea about the first ever Battle Brotherhood Expedition March of Veterans was born. The March headquarters were established, and the unique global project began to be implemented, with veterans from all over the world taking part. This is uh, Andrew. Yeah. This is Logan. Oh. How are you doing? How are you doing? Good. Okay, okay. First one all the way off is like a baby. <laughs> 
David and Andrew, the American veterans, made their long way from sunny California to snowy Moscow. Dave Lyons, U.S. Marine Staff Sergeant, who took part in the armed hostilities in Iraq and Afghanistan. He was a sniper and EOD technician. He saved the life of a fellow Marine who stepped on an IED. So I was responding, I'd gotten a call that they had found some, some improvised mines in, the, in a small village uh, outside where I was stationed. And uh, I found two bombs. I had started to work on them, started to take them apart when there was a very large explosion right behind me. And it turned out that the, the squad leader of the, the Marines I was supporting had, uh, had just stepped on one of them. Me having more, more experience and more medical training, I stopped what I was doing and, and went to help stabilize him, get, get tourniquets on him and stuff like that. We called in, we were so far from any support, we called in uh, uh, helicopters. To, to come get him out of there. So I used my my, uh, my secondary EOD technician and two engineers, and they swept, um, with the detectors, they swept a path to a big field where we could land the helicopters to get him out of there. So the helicopter shows up, and we get him on a stretcher, get him in the helicopter, and get it takes off. One can conquer Afghanistan, but you will never bring it to heel, is a phrase ascribed to Alexander the Great. The ancient land keeps the memory of warriors from different countries. Besides the foreigners, a number of domestic conflicts tear the country apart. Local tribes are struggling for power while residents are suffering from it. The Afghan land is literally stuffed with mines after decades of war. Every step on this land may turn out to be your last one. Evgeny Lyapin. Evgeny was an artilleryman who was deployed to Afghanistan after he graduated from military school. In 1982, he stepped on a landmine and since then has walked using artificial limbs. He was awarded the Order of the Red Star and other decorations. November 19th, I was serving that day. It was a separate anti-tank battalion. Along the airfield gas pipeline road, we were protected. And I had already patrolled this area in an APC. There were already two abandoned villages at the turn of the road. An armed group was in one of them. They attacked the tank column. I was in charge of that area and knew it well. I started getting deeper into the village. Anyone who steps on the Afghan soil is in grave danger. Not always do EOD operators manage to detect and dispose of the explosives. The soldier's legs cannot be protected. That is why the most frequent injury in Afghanistan is the result of stepping on an IED or landmine. Andrew Buttrell, Navy EOD technician, U.S. Navy Petty Officer, who worked with SEAL Team 10. So uh, my story is a little bit shorter because uh I don't remember any of it. So my last memory with legs is uh, the afternoon before I got blown up. I'm told that it was like a standard op, uh, typical op that we were doing in that area, just going up to a village. We, uh, we went up and we got there and then we canceled the op. On the way back, we uh, found a uh, minefield of IEDs. An improvised explosive device can lie in wait in the most unexpected locations, and any path may hide the deadly surprise. Even if dozens of people have already walked down the path, one can make their lap and final step. Iskander Galiv, who served in Afghanistan with the 345th Airborne Regiment, he was awarded the Medal for Courage. While preparing to land in Kabul, of course, I wouldn't say I felt worried or concerned. I had some strange feeling. When you haven't been to a place in a long time, you come back to feel the sort of magnetic attitude to the place. I've been longing to come back for 20 years. When we nearly landed, I felt it. I heard my heart beat on the plane. It 
Iskander was returning to Afghanistan, where he had served as part of the limited contingent of Soviet troops. 20 years earlier, they would only look at each other through the machine gun sight. I was in command of 18 people. We were crossing the Pakistan border. Our base was in the mountains. When we were shooting at Soviet soldiers, they'd come onto our land. We had nothing left to do. It seems that for the quarter of a century that has passed since the withdrawal of Soviet troops, nothing has changed. The same narrow passages and the houses leaning against each other on the mountain slopes. Like hundreds of years ago, the sheep and goats are grazing. Local residents wearing traditional garments are living their simplistic day-to-day -day lives. I was a United States Marine, and of course, you know, I would fight to protect the interests of the nation and the people. I would fight for my country wherever they sent me, to Iran, Iraq, Afghanistan, or even to Mars if that's where I got sent. If I had been ordered to fight against Russian soldiers, that's what I would have done. If I had been ordered to fight together with Russian soldiers, that's what I would have done. I have nothing against Russian soldiers or the Russian people. In fact, during World War II, U.S. soldiers combined with Russian soldiers defeated fascism. We came through all the trials and hardships of World War II together. A Marine understands another Marine, like a soldier understands another soldier, like a brother understands his brother. J.D. Johannes, a former U.S. Marine, he traveled through Afghanistan and Iraq as a war correspondent and historian spending months at a time with U.S. forces, going on daily patrols and long-range missions. You know, what does the Battle Brotherhood mean to me? It is a brotherhood of people who have experienced the same things. What the Battle Brotherhood means to me is a collection of people, men, and women. It's not just a brotherhood, there's a sisterhood to it as well in the modern era. And it's a mindset of a group of people who have faced the same things. It doesn't matter what country you have come from, what war you fought in. If you've been outside the wire and in combat, and you've had bullets flying at you, and you've put bullets back down the range again, and you've been through those experiences where you've been very close to death. I don't even remember why, but we just walked onto the minefield. I shouted, stop, get back, and I stopped walking. But I felt my second leg go onto the firing fuse. So luckily, unlike you, my body was not injured. I mean, the mine went off right above my head, like the blast wave. My bones got immediately torn off roughly, up to my knee. This is fine Afghan sand, got into my eyes, tried to open them, but I couldn't see anything. It seemed to me that it had been ages before I was able to see again. When I opened my eyes, I could see my soldier running past me, holding his forehead with his hand and bleeding. This was a holiday, so I had taken with me on patrol without expecting this to happen, only young soldiers. They hadn't served for a month yet, so they were standing there, looking at me. These young fellows, we were grass green. I said, what are you staring at? Take me by the uniform and put me in the truck. The hospital was about 12 kilometers away, but they didn't put in the tourniquet on my leg. I lost about 4.5 liters of blood. I was unconscious after that for 12 days. Most of the disabled war veterans lost their legs in Afghanistan from stepping on improvised explosive devices. Vadim Fersovich, an officer in Russia's main intelligence directorate who served in Afghanistan. Lieutenant Colonel Fersovich was awarded the Courage Award and other decorations. In 2011, he traveled to Afghanistan as a correspondent for Russia's military diplomat magazine and is the only known former Soviet military officer to embed with U.S. Marines in Helmand province. 
Every time I go back to Afghanistan, it is a life-changing decision for you. The general impression of the Marine Force's actions is that, despite their young age, they are well-trained professionals and are absolutely like Soviet soldiers. Anyone who steps on the Afghan land is vulnerable to a lethal surprise. There is no protection from the mines. The bulletproof vest and the helmet only protect the upper part of the body. And terrorists place improvised explosive devices in the most unexpected locations. I can't believe that we're standing here now. Two years ago, it was a really dangerous spot. Roman Gen, a Moscow-born artist who lives and works in the United States. He took part in military operations with U.S. Marine forces and made a series of graphic artworks depicting the Marines he met. The works made during his trips will take their rightful place in an exhibition. Roman is engaged in the organization of the International Exhibition of Military Artists and Military Photographers. Within the framework of the Battle Brotherhood project, Andrei Chernyshev is organizing the International Festival of Soldier Songs. One of the key events in the March of Veterans is the first ever International Battle Brotherhood Music Festival of Soldier Songs. At all times, war songs have gone hand in hand with the soldier at any war. The song can be lyrical or warlike. It can be different. During the march, or in battle, or at rest, it is always needed. Any song written at war is an emotional outburst of a person who wants to show he has come through it. Andrei Chernyshev. Andrei took part in the Soviet-Afghan war with the 345th Airborne Regiment. He was awarded the Medal for Courage. He is the author and performer of the Battle Brotherhood Songbook. Andre is one of the few musicians who were honored to perform at the annual Airborne Forces Day concert in Red Square in front of the gathered Airborne troopers and their guests. Ах, если мог бы каждый знать, где встретишь свой последний бой, мне стыдно было б здесь лежать. В земле сырой, в земле сырой. А сколько нас лежит там сейчас? Среди вранья и черных птиц, Где рядом с водкой ордена, Где мать молчит и брат молчит. На гробовой плите все мы Все, что осталось здесь от нас Я не считаю только сны И фото, где видите вы нас У каждого бойца Твоя судьба И если ты забыл Я умер, чтоб ты жил Будь ветром и дождем Гори звездой Не наслаждайся тишиной Ведь кто еще с тобой And so we're coming back on the same path, the same path we carried, carried the patient already. And I was actually walking behind two guys with detectors and a, and a bomb dog. So I just, just 
the unlucky unlucky foot stepped on one and uh it was a full amputation and and the arm damage right away and uh the um our, our medic had been rattled so so i had to start you know putting my own tourniquets on i called in the other helicopter was already gone so i had uh my radio on on my back was still working and uh the other guy who knows how to call helicopters was the guy that we had just put on the other helicopter i set up and uh called in the helicopter i had about an hour uh to lay on the ground and and uh and wait for the helicopter to show up about 20 minutes later i realized that uh my right lung had started to collapse and uh i didn't trust any of the guys there to stick holes in me so i just started telling the helicopter hey when you get here be prepared for for you know collapsed lung and, and they're like oh who, who's the patient i'm like you'll see when you get here you know <laughs> so the helicopter shows up and, and and i get um get loaded up and it was a it was a british helicopter and he shows me a, a pink syringe and says don't worry mate i got you and i probably sleep for about three weeks so i woke up three weeks later in the hospital in america yeah, no, I was just saying it took me about a year and a half to start learning how to walk on, on those legs. And so now I'm, I'm here. And it's good. I'm happy. Using this opportunity, let me introduce David Lyon, U.S. Marine Staff Sergeant, a veteran who fought in Afghanistan and Iraq, the man of great courage and dignity. He is our brother, because every veteran, we are all soldiers and brothers. David wants to greet you and say a few words. I'll translate it for you. I have to write everything down because otherwise can't remember and not fall on my face. Hi, my name is David Lyon. I'm a Staff Sergeant of the United States Marine Corps, uh, EOD technician and combat veteran of Iraq and Afghanistan. It's a great honor for me to bring the warmest wishes from the American veterans and to congratulate you with Airborne Troops Day. We in the USA do know quite a lot about the legendary General Margulov, and we respect the Russian paratroopers a great deal, at least the Marines do. We, the military, always faithfully do our duty. Every man that has been through combat knows what it's like and respects the men who do the same. Here on the Red Square, there are the vehicles of the International Round the World Veteran Rally, Battle Brotherhood. Russian and American veterans, the whole world will take part in, in this activity. Thank you very much for your attention. The Round the World Motor Rally is one of the key stages of the forthcoming international project. At the moment, the International March staff are working on its preparation. To start with, some test drives were carried out with international teams of veterans and the disabled taking part in them. It marked the beginning of a huge international program that includes a wide range of events to be implemented within the next few years with thousands of people taking part in them. There are no borders for the Battle Brotherhood. It unites people from different countries. I don't remember any of it, but uh, apparently uh, the whole vehicle was flipped up, thrown up into the air and flipped over. There was no top on the vehicle, it was open. The guys behind me told me I was 30 feet in the air. They, they told me that uh, before, while I was still in the air, the medic could tell that I was already missing parts. About uh, two and a half weeks later, I woke up in America. During his visit to Moscow, Andrew Batrell, a U.S. veteran, Navy EOD, military swimmer, and sniper, visited the Museum of the Russian Army. There is a room in the museum dedicated to the 345th Independent Guards Airborne Regiment. Sultan Muleyev, 
who fought in Afghanistan with the Guards Regiment, showed Andrew the flag of the regiment and some other exhibits he cherished. Sultan Bek Muleyev, he served in the 345th Airborne Regiment with the Chameleon Intelligence Subdivision. Sultan Bek was awarded the Order of the Red Star. Sultan gave his friend a present, his guard sign. The traditions of battle brotherhood friendship go back into the times of the Soviet and American troops united actions during World War II. This photograph was taken in the town of Torgu in 1945. Up to this very moment, the tradition of friendship and mutual help between the soldiers of the countries has been alive. Andrew brought an artificial limb for his Russian friend. This act was quite symbolic. A soldier of one country gave an artificial limb to a soldier of another country. Both the soldier and the general know what the battle brotherhood means. Ruslan Aushev, hero of the Soviet Union, Colonel General. He fought in the Soviet-Afghan War. Ruslan was the first president of the Ingush Republic. There are two types of friendships which are the strongest, after a war and after prison. These two categories of people are the world's strongest friends. This is inexplicable. It's like being in an emergency situation and having that person nearby who had saved you or you had saved them or he had helped you or you would helped him. Our committee has already helped more than 400,000 Afghan veterans. Only for me. This is all that thick and carbon fiber with the computer and small hydraulics. David made a decision to give a present to a Russian war veteran who had also lost legs in Afghanistan. David and Andrew were role models for everyone. They showed us how to overcome deprivation and pain and start performing deeds. I would like to thank David. A real soldier will always understand another real soldier, regardless of what country he lives in. To you, During his next visit to Moscow, David planned to take his son with him to show him the beautiful city with its monuments and to sail down the Moscow River. David was full of hope and plans for the future and didn't know that exactly a year later he would pass away, staying in our hearts forever.
the relationships between these people who had gone through this pit of hell in their lives. These relationships grow to become this phenomenon. They develop into this hard as granite or diamond concept, the Battle Brotherhood and the soldiers of the other superpower. Each of them executes orders and serves their motherland, but all live on the same planet, and all people are brothers. These are the key ideas behind the concept of the Battle Brotherhood, the Brotherhood Without Borders. Valery Vostroitin, hero of the Soviet Union, Colonel General. Valery took part in the storming of Tajbeg Palace in December 1979. Commander of the 345th Independent Guards Airborne Regiment. For us, the Battle Brotherhood has long been a concept on a national scale. The Battle Brotherhood of Soviet veterans and the Battle Brotherhood of Russian veterans of all wars. Our present experience clearly demonstrates that the International Battle Brotherhood exists as well. We wish this tool was used, among others, by politicians to serve peaceful purposes. David Krasnopolowski, U.S. Army Sergeant and War Veteran. I think this event is fantastic, and I don't think of course, it can immediately help the disabled. But no doubt, this motor rally will draw attention to these people, the veterans, especially to the disabled and the issues they are facing. How it can help is to give the veterans and the disabled an opportunity to feel sound and able again, because as I understand it, this is going to be a motor rally, and you'll have to be active to take part in it which is very important for those who lost part of their physiological abilities in the course of armed hostilities. And for them, it is very difficult to get back to normal life, not only after returning from war, but also having some permanent physical injuries. You have to agree that it is not that easy. Not everyone can go through it. And I think, to these people taking part in such an event, it will give an opportunity to feel like full members of society, while society will have a chance to see these people, their lives and capabilities, in spite of what they look like. And I think that a lot of disabled people can give a head start to a great many healthy people, because they have to overcome the challenges that a common person can't even think of in their lives. They overcome the challenges and live quite successfully. Unfortunately, not everyone managed to cope with what has happened to them. And no doubt, such people need total support from the government and society in general. Society can help in such a way that each and every one of these people, we can help them without feeling sorry for them. They don't need it, trust me. They don't need this cheap pity. Real help? Yes. Because they live next to you. You see them every day and pass by. They're living trying to survive. So helping them is not only your duty as a citizen, it should come within your heart and your soul. Because they did what others didn't. They went there to risk their lives. They were badly injured and survived. And we should give credit to them for what they did. The government is unfortunately a wieldly contraption. It is trying to do its best. But as you may guess, the disabled are not the primary concern of the government. And I think society should get together themselves, self or organize and understand who these people are, the veterans, especially the disabled veterans, and turn your faces to them instead of pushing them aside, and accept them as they are, and help them become full members of society again, regardless of where they live, in Russia, 
in the United States or in any country in the world. I met Dave at Fab Gulistan uh, in uh, Farah province, which is uh, western Afghanistan. The weather was bad. So we, we got stuck there for about a week, and uh, that, that's when I became friends with Dave Lyon. I think he told me that you cannot actually take any pictures of us or write our names because it's considered to be bad luck in EOD community. Uh, apparently, if, if, if another EOD tech sees the story, you have to buy this guy a beer. He was a great guy. He was uh, physically strong, mentally strong. He was, I don't think he was a team leader at the time. We just started hanging out, drinking uh, a beer at, at the local pub uh, by the Pendleton. Uh, I, got a, I got a call from uh, Matt Bateman, uh, a gunnery sergeant who was uh, Dave's team leader. Uh, that Dave got hurt and uh, uh, lost his legs. And then I would call him. He did not remember me calling because he was out of it, but he did He did respond. So I remember the first time I called him, uh, he was conscious and he told me that, yeah, man, got hurt a little. And, uh, he, well, he, and I, I would call him quite often, but he didn't remember any of it later, so he was in and out. I didn't know what to do with him. I didn't know what to say because I, 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 at the time I didn't have any any experience dealing with such uh, grievous injury. The physical pain, uh, the mental pain, uh, and the incredible strength that it takes to live through it, to to uh, to work through it constantly, daily. Uh, because we, we who, who are intact, we do not realize how difficult it is to get a cup of water, uh, to just uh, to brush your teeth, to go to the bathroom at night. It's a completely different world that, uh, that the disabled veteran lives in. And uh, um, aside, from, aside from physical pain, uh, uh, also the moral uh, aspect of it. And I remember at one point, uh, I got a call from a, a Iskander Galif, who is a uh, Afghan veteran in Moscow, and he wanted to invite a disabled American vet to see Moscow and to see people like him, to meet with them, uh, to, to, to bond, to see people who, who lived uh, with the same injuries for about 20 years or so. So that's, that's how, that's how it, it happened. So they invited Dave. Uh, uh, to, to, go, to go to Moscow to visit the, uh, um, uh, Russia to see what, what, what people are like there and, and so forth. So we went. It's, it's in essence they, did, they didn't need to explain because uh, Dave did not speak Russian except a couple of words here and there. And the, uh, the, the Russian veterans barely speak English. They speak some but not, not a lot. But uh, they say the names like Bujipas or, or, or Helmand or something, and they, they light up. Oh yes, I was there. So so they didn't really need to 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 have full understanding of the of the. They understood each other better than I think our our uh, politicians, unfortunately. making a difference here and I would do it all over again I would come back and continue to come back and make the difference for this country and my country as well you can see the history as you walk around a lot of these places I've seen a lot and it's definitely different than what I had anticipated yeah a lot of people uh, don't really ever get to be in something that had a part of history um, don't ever get to be somewhere that had a part of history so being here, um, knowing all of that, it's actually really, really amazing. That's funny when people say, you know, you're only like 1% of America, you know, this and that. But to, to most of us, like to speak for most of us, it doesn't seem that way. It doesn't seem more like a privilege or an obligation. It just seems like at this time, it's what we have to do. 
Um, I'm a lot tougher than I thought I was. The fact that I'm here with the, the people I'm here with, the young soldiers that I'm serving with, I've served with for this year, I think I'm more proud to, of the fact that I actually had the opportunity to be here with them. We're proud to do it and we don't want credit for it. You know, we're your normal everyday brothers, sisters, fathers, norm, normal people that you walk down the street. Those are the ones that will protect the country and live in those outposts. A lot of brothers with you, which, is, which, has, been, which has been amazing to help you through things because everybody else is going through the same thing you're going through. You know, being a part of history itself is, is a big deal, especially considering I have kids. To be a part of that is just really awesome. It's, it's really good. Um, it definitely makes me who I am. It definitely changed who I was when I first joined the Army. So the things I've learned about myself is just, you know, I'm a lot tougher. I can handle a lot of things a lot better than what I really thought I could. I'm now a part of the Afghan history. It was a great learning experience. You know, doing the right thing for the right cause when, when time calls. Just the experience in itself. It's just, it's something I'm gonna be able to talk about for many years, as long as I live. I can say that I was a part of something great. I was there. I think that's what makes a big part of you saying, hey, I was there and I helped out. Battle Brotherhood. Battle Brotherhood. Battle Brotherhood. Battle Sisterhood. Battle sisterhood.